Queens, welcome back to my channel, Kathy's World here on YouTube, and today we're doing my four book reading wrap up for the month of September. I may increase my reading to five books next month, that's kind of the goal, but no promises. If you see a little bit of fur over here, this is my daughter's dog, Roxy. She's out of town and Roxy's staying with me. She's a sweet little dog. All right, so let's start with, I read, well, this was a did not finish book. Dean Kuhn's book. I did finish this one. I did finish this one. And the children's book I will always finish. Young at heart, right? And you know how I rate my books on a scale of one to five? One being I will never read it again or recommend it. And five being I loved it and I would highly recommend it. So let's start with, this is The Stranger. And this is by Harlan Coben. I found this book to be very interesting. Uh, the Stranger is 449 pages. Goodreads gave it 3.87 stars. Genre is mystery, thriller, fiction. In the book jacket, they say, the stranger appears out of nowhere, perhaps in a bar or a parking lot or a grocery store. His identity is unknown. His motives are unclear. His information is undeniable. Then he whispers a few words in your ear and disappears, leaving you picking up the pieces of your shattered world. The protagonist in this book is Adam. He seems to have everything going for him. He's got the perfect job, the perfect wife, two wonderful sons. Everything seems to be going his way, but he's approached by a stranger. The stranger comes up to him, whispers a secret in his ear, and walks away. I'm not going to tell you what the secret is, but it could devastate the family. So he has to figure out what he needs to do with this information. Should he ignore it? Should she act upon it? And it has to do with his wife. So Adam does decide to act on this new information, and he does approach his wife, and then he's sucked into this world of lies and danger and even murder. There are other people who are approached by the stranger in this book, and it devastates their world as well, sometimes in a deadly fashion. Originally, when I first started this book, I was sucked into it. I thought the premise was great. This is going to be a wonderful book. I gave it three out of five stars, for me it tended to lose focus a little bit. There was more going on than just The Stranger. It's worth reading, not one of my favorites, but, but worth it. As I was reading reviews for this book, I saw that the author is a Coben. A lot of the people writing the reviews said this was their least favorite of his books. If this was their least favorite by Coben, then I would really like to try some of his other books because I gave this a three, which is not a horrible rating. Um, not that I'd want to read it again, but I, I think I will try some of his other books. All right, let's move on to the next one. Hello, Roxy. Come here, look over here at the camera. Look over here at the camera. I have a dog, he's not allowed on the couch. Roxy has been grandfathered in because she's allowed on the couch at home. So I'm getting hair all over me, but I still love her. <laughs> all right, so Alice Hoffman. Practical Magic. Goodreads gives this book 3.79 stars out of 5. It's 286 pages. The genre is fantasy, magical realism, fiction. Here's a quote from the book jacket. For more than 200 years, the Owens women have been blamed for everything that has gone wrong in their Massachusetts town. Gillian and Sally have endured that fate as well. As children, the sisters were forever outsiders, taunted, talked about, pointed at. The elderly aunts almost seemed to encourage the whispers of witchery with their musty house and their exotic concoctions and their crowd of black cats. All Gillian and Sally wanted was to escape. One will do so by marrying, the other by running away, but the bonds they share will bring them back almost as if by magic. I enjoyed this book. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. For me, this book was a fun and easy ride. The story centers around two sisters, Sally and Gillian. They were orphaned at an early age and went to live with their aunts, and their aunts were witches. The suspicion in the community that these folks were witches caused them to ostracize the family and believe that everything that bad that happened in the community was because of these sisters. The two girls, Gillian and Sally, decided they just had to escape. The storyline follows them as they both leave, going in different directions, and they try to set up new lives for themselves. You get to know the lives that they chose, you get to know their daughters, and you also get to know the ghosts that literally haunt them. So I did enjoy this book. I watched the movie. There is a movie. I, I didn't enjoy the movie at all. Um, it didn't get the greatest reviews. It, the book is much better, I'll just tell you that. 
So this is worth the read. Not, not an amazing book, but definitely worth the read. The next book on my list is by Dean Koontz, and I've read a lot of Dean Koontz books that I've loved. This one is called The Crooked Staircase. This is a long book. It's over 500 pages. I completed probably into the 300s in, or in the low 400s. I just, it completely lost me. I, I did not enjoy this book. I did read the end of the book, and I say I didn't finish it only because I skimmed a lot of it. I got kind of bored with it. It started out with an amazing premise. The genre is mystery and thriller. Goodreads gave it 4.08 stars out of five, and the quote from the book jacket. Jane Hawk knows she may be living on borrowed time, but as long as she's breathing, she'll never cease her one-woman war against the terrifying conspiracy that threatens the freedom and free will of millions. Battling the strange epidemic of murder-suicides that claim Jane's husband and is escalating across the country has made the, this rogue FBI agent a wanted figure, relentlessly hunted not only by the government, but by the secret cabal behind the plot. Pulling every resource, their malign nexus of power and technology commands, Jane's enemies are determined to see her dead or make her wish she was. So she, Jane is a rogue FBI agent. She knows that there are these factions that are doing things they shouldn't be doing in the government. If they don't like how a person acts, what a person thinks, or they think they can disrupt society as they want it to be, these rogue folks go out, capture the people, inject them with nanobots, and these nanobots can tell them pretty much what to do. So they're in essence taking over society. Well, Jane's fighting that. I was so quickly drawn into the storyline. It started out following this, this brother-sister duo who were writers. This new government entity did not like what these people had to say in their writings, so they were chasing them with the serum to be injected into their bodies to change the way they think, to change the way they write, or to do whatever they want them to do. So it was really exciting in the beginning. They're chasing them down. They're hiding out here. They're hiding out there. I won't say if they finally caught them. But I was, I was kind of sucked in, and I, I liked Jane, I liked her family, I liked her friends, I liked the drama of her being chased and her fighting back, all good. But then it got a little repetitive and a little too descriptive, and I found myself getting bored. So I started skimming. I would skim and skim and skip and skim and skim, and I finally got to the end, and there was no end. It's like a sequel. And I could not find anywhere on this book where it said it was part of a sequel. It left you hanging on the cliff and it made me mad. I want an ending. It doesn't have to be a good ending, but I just want an ending. And there was none. It just left hanging there. So my book rating, which probably in the beginning would have been up there, went down to a, did I give it a two? I gave it a two per five because the beginning was very good. Whether or not, I don't know what the second book is. But in my mind, it, it was not worth the read, and I would not read it again. It needed an ending, but I love Dean Koontz. Then we have the fun book. I love the children's books, and I almost always like them. This is Green Wilma by Ted Arnold. It's a children's picture book, children's story time, humor. It got 3.8 stars on Goodreads. This is one of my granddaughter's favorite books, Maggie. She comes over, and she loves when she sees Green Wilma quote from Amazon. Wilma's parents don't know quite what to do when their daughter wakes up green and requests bugs for breakfast. At school, Wilma's teachers are appalled by her unusually colorful antics. Wherever Wilma goes, surprise awaits her and the readers of this irresistibly funny fable. Absurd and action-packed. So I found this to be a really fun book. So Wilma wakes up, she's green, and she wants to eat flies. The illustrations are so cute. Maggie loves Wilma. Maggie loves the flies. Maggie loves the teacher. This is a great book, and I gave it a very high score. <laughs> I gave this a five for five on my reading scale because my granddaughter loves this book, and I enjoy it a lot, too. Okay, guys, that's it for my reading wrap-up of September. I would love to know if you guys have read any of these books and how you feel about them. Did any of you guys read this? And were you frustrated by the ending, or were you excited to try to find the sequel? I don't know. All right, guys, you take care, and thanks for stopping by, and happy reading to you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.